What's going on YouTube? Kamikaze Von Doom here with another Division 2 video. Now shout out to the DoD, Doubles of Doom. And today's video we're going to go over Cassie Mendoza's weekly vendor reset and must buys. Today is Wednesday, September 29th. Hope everyone is staying healthy and safe. And let's get into it. Now, the problem about this Cassie Mendoza video is that I have already found the snitch. So, what I would like for you guys to do is let me know in the comment section below where you have found the snitch. Now, for me personally, it's nothing new. Um, I usually find the snitch uh, right about here, about 46 by 36, 33. Um, it, you can easily fast travel to the 1040 safe house, run south, and you will find the snitch in that location. However, if you cannot find the snitch in that location, remember that he spawns all over the open world. So it might take you some time to find him. In that case, what I ask is every week for you guys to let me know in the comment section below where you have found the snitch personally, whether it's at Final Epiphany, Castle, The Mast, wherever you find him. Let us know in the comment section below. That way it helps out other people. I get comments every single week with people that say they cannot find the snitch. So please help each other out. Let us know where you found the snitch and maybe that can help out somebody else. Now, once you find the snitch, you need to interact with them and then you will see gun runner location revealed. In that case, you need to look on your map for the white shopping cart icon. So for this one, it is just across the street from the theater settlement. So I'm going to go over there. Now before I do that, I want you to look in the top left of your screen. You can see a vendor is open. And it says that the vendor will close in 18 hours. So, big disclaimer. For all of you looking for Cassie Mendoza, her vendor opens and closes every other day. So you need to time it out right. If you just go and see her on Wednesdays or on Thursdays, if you're in, I don't know, Australia, um, you should be able to find her. If her vendor is closed, you are going to have to wait for the following day to see her, you know, her items. So just remember that her vendor does open and close. So just be timely about it. That's all I ask. All right. Now I am fast traveling to the theater settlement and then we will go straight to Cass Mendoza. This actually should be a little bit quicker of a video because I did not have to go see the snitch. Now don't forget to hit that like, support the channel please, it does help me out a lot. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, we're about to hit 32,000 subscribers. So thank you so much for the ongoing support. Remember I do videos every single day with live streams at night, for the most part. Um, sometimes I'll take some days off. Um, but alright, so we just left the theater settlement, and uh, I'm going to go across the street and show you exactly how to find Cassie Mendoza. Now she's going to be in a, I How's guess you would call it, what, a secret bullet. room? I wouldn't call it a secret room. It's more of like a hidden room. What is up with my controller? My guy keeps trying to, like, run right for some reason. There we go. So what I'm saying by hidden is you can't really necessarily see that the door is open. You have to be like right on top of it. So here we are. Now Cassie, just because I opened the door earlier, you can see that it's open right here. However, um, usually this door will be closed and the only way you can see the open sign is you'd have to be like this close to it. So just remember, look for the door with the wood on the bottom left corner. You should be fine. Now Cassie is just inside here, so let's talk about her vendor reset and must buys. Here we go. Take your time, agent. All right, so remember Cassie Mendoza's vendor. It starts off with the named items, then the gear set items, and then finally the high-end items and mods. Now disclaimer about the named items. You might only be able to see two of these items, and that is because you haven't hunt down and eliminated all of the hunters in the game. Now for the shield splinterer, shout out to my buddy Splinter Shield. Um, this weapon's actually named after him. Now the shield splinterer, the only way to get this one is you have to hunt down and eliminate all of the year one hunters. 
then you have to open up the ivory chest that is in the base of ops in Washington DC. Once you do that, it'll unlock this weapon and you can, you know, buy it from Cassie Mendoza every single week until you find whatever god roll it is you want. Now you are not going to be able to have this weapon drop in the open world. This is kind of like a special exclusive item. So once you open it up from the ivory chest, the only other way to get that item is from Cassie Mendoza. Now, the same logic applies here with the hunter killer chest piece. Now you have to hunt down and eliminate all of the year two hunters that are attached to the Warlords of New York expansion. Once you do that, you have to open up the off-white chest that is in the Haven base of ops in New York City. Once you do that, it'll unlock this chest piece and then you will be able to see it here from Cassie Mendoza. But remember, the splinter shield and the hunter killer chest piece will not drop in the open world. The only way to get more of these items is Cassie Mendoza. So there you go. Now let's start with the vendor reset. Starting at the top with the artist tool. This is the named rifle with perfect rifleman. It also comes with reload speed. Followed by the zero F's chest piece. This is the named badger tough chest piece with perfectly unbreakable. Now perfectly unbreakable for PVE will repair 100% of your armor once all of your armor is depleted. However, I want to show you that in PVP, oh, and actually won't let me toggle that for a vendor. Um, let's see. Happy to do business with you. So for PVP, here's a normal unbreakable. So it's at 95, so you just add 5%. But in PVP, it drops down to 50% and that perfectly unbreakable will be 55% for PVP. So just remember that it does say 100% of your armor will come back. However, in PVP, Agent. it will Agent. only go up to 55%. Oh, there it goes. So I had to toggle the PVP setting um, outside of the vendor, but there you go. So this is for PVP, you will only repair 55% of your armor. Just remember that. Next up, we have the Shield Splinterer. This is the named F2000 with Perfect Optimus. Remember, the only way to get this is from those year one hunters. Now this assault rifle comes with optimal range. That's not my favorite attribute, but the AR damage is fairly high. So if you need one, I'd pick this one up, just reroll the optimal range off for either damaged armor, damaged targets out of cover, and then just optimize the AR damage, what, like maybe once or twice and then it'll be maxed out. Great weapon. And then finally for the named items, we have the Hunter Killer chest piece. This is my favorite chest piece in the game. Reason being is it comes with Perfect Intimidate. Now Perfect Intimidate is the same for PVE and PVP. You get 40% amplified damage. You can't beat that anywhere in the game. This is the best chest piece to get. So if you have not, killed all of the warlords of new york hunters yet i would really jump on that because this chest piece is really worth it all right now as far as the attributes it comes with status effects and repair skills and then also armor um as far as the attributes those are not my favorite however if you want to keep armor on there i would also keep the status effects and then just re-roll the repair skills off for either crit chance, crit damage, armor region, whatever it is you need. Um, but the status effects does work with this chess piece because you also get the status effects from the Golan Gear brand set bonus as well. So you can kind of double dip in the uh, status effects for this chess piece. And those are your named items. So let's go into the gear set items. Starting off with the hardwired backpack. Comes with headshot damage. Um, yeah. Then we have a Striker's Chess Piece with Skill Haste. Negotiator's Dilemma Gloves with Weapon Handling. True Patriot Knee Pads with Status Effects. Negotiator's Dilemma Holster with Weapon Handling. And then finally, a True Patriot Mask with Explosive Resistance. Now, anything must buys or anything I would like for you guys to look at as far as these gear set items are concerned. Um, so the only thing I'd like to note out of all of this 
is these two negotiators dilemma pieces come with weapon handling. Um, but that's about it. I mean, it's just useless knowledge. So if you're a big weapon handling fan, you could pick up both of these and you could get crit on top of the weapon handling. I would say do that with like an LMG. That would be your best bet. Probably like high crit LMG with like, I don't know, obliterate and weapon handling for the reload speed. I mean, that would be pretty nice, but to each their own. All right, next up, high-end items. Black Market M60 with Future Perfect and Crit Damage. Followed by a Resolute MK47 with Reload Speed and Preservation. Fenris Chess Piece with Max Weapon Damage, Skill Haste, and Status Effects with Kinetic Momentum. All right, I appreciate your I'll bite. Um, I'm picking this one up, and I'm going to say this is uh, something you should look at. I wouldn't necessarily say it's a must-buy, because a lot of you probably won't run it the way I would run it. Now, the first thing I think of when I see this is double yellows with kinetic momentum on a Fenris. I am automatically thinking skill build with the capacitor. Now, with that being said... The way I would maximize this is to re-roll the status effects off for max skill damage. And then you could have skill damage, weapon damage with the capacitor that also gives you skill damage. And it also comes with kinetic momentum. I mean, this is a pretty good piece to start a skill build with. I'm just saying. It's a pretty good piece. Especially if you're running things like, you know, the test subject or the capacitor. So yeah, check that one out. Fenris chess piece, kinetic momentum, double yellows, and max weapon damage. Pretty good pickup. Overlord armament knee pads with weapon handling and armor regen. And then finishing off with the mods, we have a skill haste 10.6 and a hive health of 8%. Now, must buys from the high-end items. The only one is the Fenris chess piece. And that's actually like one of the only things I'd recommend in this reset, to be honest. Um, looking at the named items, I mean, you could, you know, use the hunter killer chess piece with that status effects and just re-roll the repair skills off for crit chance, crit damage, armor region, whatever it is you want. Uh, it, it could be good, could be. Um, but using a whole bunch of status effects with Perfect Intimidate is really not the way I would run it. So that's why I'm not really saying pick it up. Now the Zero F's chess piece, this is a good one as well. Now Armor Regen is pretty good with Unbreakable because you're getting armor back. And if all that armor is depleted, you get armor back as well. Remember it's only 55% in PvP and then it goes up to 100% for PvE. Now having the armor region and explosive resistance is not my favorite combination. So what I would do personally is I would reroll the explosive resistance off for say crit chance, crit damage, hazard protection, something like that, that would help your build out more and then just optimize the armor and the armor region. Now a lot of these things I would say optimize because a lot of these gear pieces have potential but you have to see the potential. A lot of people might be like, oh, those attributes are too low, don't do that. But if you actually took time and you needed that item, you could easily get it to where you want it and then just optimize it. Yeah, it might take a couple hours of farming to do that, but it's very, very worth the, you know, the grind, I guess you could say. So check that one out. Um, let's see, none of the gear items, uh, the gear set items, I'm not gonna even talk about those. And then the Fenris chess piece with that kinetic momentum, double yellows and max weapon damage, that's a good one. Check that one out, especially if you like to use the test subject or the capacitor while using a skill build. This is a must buy in my book, it's not bad. Uh, switch out the status effects for skill damage. That way you have skill damage, skill haste with max weapon damage and kinetic momentum. This is a great chess piece to have. All right, that is it everyone. That is your Cassie Mendoza weekly vendor resets and must buy for Wednesday, September, what is it, 29th? 
yeah, September 29th. Hope everyone is having a great time. Stay healthy, stay safe. Don't forget to check out my other weekly vendor reset video that I do on Tuesdays. And yeah, have a good one, everyone. Don't forget, hit that like, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care and peace.